Hello uh, to everybody. Uh, welcome to this session on Meta Communities in Tropical and Mediterranean Ponds. Uh, we are talking from Valencia, Spain. Uh, uh, this event, the hum Humboldt Day, has been organized by the International Biogeography Society and commemorates the figure of Alexander von Humboldt, uh, which has been considered as the father of biogeography. This particular session has been organized by Frances Mesquita and myself, uh, Javier Armengol, and uh, <coughs> uh, uh, consists of five short presentations dealing with uh, dealing with uh, uh, different uh, subjects related with with the with the topic. Uh, I will talk about the pond environment. Frances Mesquita will talk about the diversity in tropical and Mediterranean ponds. Uh, Angel Galvez speak about the environmental and spatial effects on species distribution. Uh, Maria Vizquer will talk about uh, uh, the colonization of the ponds, an experiment with hatching of resting eggs. And Andreu Castillo Escriba will talk uh, a more theoretical uh, presentation with simulated and natural data communities dealing with the effect of uh, well most of uh, the communication most of this presentation are based on the information extracted from the project with a community organization in a tropical and Mediterranean temporary policy, spatial environmental and temporal effect uh, this project has been supported by the Spanish Ministry of Economy and Competition. And uh, here we have a list of the research team. We have also many collaborators. And there are many institutions involved in the project, uh, either by the University of Valencia, Spain, but also with people from the University of Costa Rica, Concordia, Canada, uh, Sheffield, a whole in England. Uh, and also some institutions, Chile, Romania, are also involved in the project. Uh, uh, to all this project, we have studied a selection of 32 Mediterranean uh, and 30 tropical temporary ponds in close to the region of, of Valencia, in Spain, and in the northern part of Costa Rica. We studied around two years. That means two hydrological cycles, one between 2017 and 2018. Uh, the four involves six sampling campaigns, three each year, and covering environmental features and uh, biological topics. Uh, well, now I, 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 my talk is mostly devoted to deal with the environmental characteristics of tropical and Mediterranean. Uh, well, the concept of meta community is uh, central in community ecology, and a meta community is a set of local communities that are linked by dispersal of multiple potentially interacting species. Thus, local, local effects, environmental effects, and regional uh, effects mostly are used to explain the structure of such communities. There are many examples of uh, communities isolated uh, that are a good example or are a good model to study meta communities. For instance, islands is the typical uh, kind of ecosystem uh, to study uh, this. Uh, this isolated communities and the relation of them, or these isolated sites and the relation of them. 
but there are also many ecological islands. High mountains, tons of vegetation in an arid environment like oasis or some others, but also the lakes, the, the terrestrial ecosystems are the example of quite isolated communities separated by a matrix that is uh, uh, not uh, adequate for the organism living in the uh, in this sense, the ponds are very interesting system to study community research, meta-community research, because the systems are completely isolated or, in some cases, partly isolated. They have distances, the matrix that separates the environments could be of different characteristics. Uh, well, in the project that I mentioned before, we have studied some of these 32 Mediterranean temporary ponds located in eastern Spain. Here you have more or less the map of the distribution of and some of the uh, and some of the ponds that we, we can see. Uh, we also studied 30 temporary ponds in northern Costa Rica, in covering an area similar to the one we studied in the Mediterranean uh, climate, and here you have some examples of this type of problems. Uh, the climate features in a tropical or Mediterranean site is shown in this graph. Uh, this, this is one of the areas that we studied, Guanacaste, Costa Rica, Valencia, and Eastern Spain. You have seen the lines show the temperature uh, in the tropical system, which is much more constant along the year, and in the Mediterranean system, change a lot along the year. Uh, the precipitations are shown by bars. The green bars show the precipitation in the tropical system, and the uh, orange bars in the Mediterranean system. As you see, there is a great constant contrast sorry, in the tropical system with a very dry period and a heavy rainy period. In the Mediterranean, we have also a dry period in summer that coincides with the warmest season, high temperature and lowest precipitation, which is characteristic of the Mediterranean grid. Uh, the temporary force change along the hydrological cycle in the Mediterranean, but also the tropical system. And then we have a dry phase, uh, uh, and we have a dry phase, and we have more or less pruning, uh, uh, which is higher at the rainy period of uh, heavy rains. And here you have a, a picture of tropical pond, which is almost drying, almost dry. So. Well, the effects of metacommunity can be uh, uh, studied from the environment, space, and also the, the time, and so on. All these uh, effects can contribute to explain the variation that we found in the metacommunity. Uh, in this talk, we will focus on the environment. The environment is the template where community fits. To study the environment, we have we have uh, studied a uh, lot of quite environmental characteristics, including biotic and biotic immunological variants that we measure in situ. We also studied some abiotic and biotic immunological variants measured from the water and sediment samples. And we also uh, studied some regional factors, as climatic variables, landscape variables, or uh, spatial uh, parameters that we measured. Uh, and some of these variables, landscape variables, were measured in the area surrounding the water. Uh, some examples of the immunological variables measured are 
temperature, water transparency, oxygen content, pH, conductivity. We also studied some biological, limnological variables, uh, like the different forms of aquatic vegetation, so vegetation, protein vegetation, vegetation, also called evaporation. Uh, other limnological variables that we measure in the water cellular samples, chlorophyllate, nutrients, main anions and cations, organic matter in the sediment, mantle, dental. Uh, some of the landscape variables that we measure were audio, climate, size and morphology of the pond and of the hydrographic basin, the use of the soil in the surroundings of the ponds, natural agriculture, livestock, uh, and reserve vegetation power around the pond. Uh, we have studied a wide array of organisms in these ponds, from prokaryotes to amphibians vertebrates, and to the many of the groups commonly used in technological studies. Uh, for, uh, for this studies, for this study, we made uh, we have made several analyses, but just in order to explore the distribution of the data and of the sample, we made a principal component analysis. And here, in this graph, uh, you can see in yellow or brownish colors the distribution of the sampling sites in the Mediterranean area. And the green colors, clear to darker green, the distribution of sites in the uh, tropical um, tropical uh, in this graph have been represented the three, the three uh, sampling confines of the first year. Uh, the first sampling is of a clearer color in both uh, sites in the Mediterranean and the tropical. Uh, the, the second is a little bit darker, and the third is darker. So uh, we have represented the distribution of, uh, of sites represented by the main uh, environmental characteristics that we have used in this both sides. As you can see, both sides are clearly separated. This is also because we have included the uh, climatic variables in the graph, which separates clearly because of temperature and precipitation of sites. But also, we, we don't use these uh, climatic variables. There is also a quite, a quite good uh, separation between, between uh, both types of products. Uh, well, in this case, the first component of the PCA explains 28% of the variance, and the second component, PCA2, uh, around 15%. Uh, this first component really separates the Mediterranean and tropical regions. As I told you, temperature and range are strongly correlated, but the other variables that also uh, clearly separate both sites are related to nutrients and mineralization, but also oxygen, depth, pH, chlorophyllate also contributed to this first uh, uh, component. Other variables, as the types of vegetation cover, uh, the amount of cover, but also some landscape variables are well also important for but also for the second component. Well, uh, we, when we uh, join the, the dots, I mean the sides of the first campaign, yeah, we, we are going to represent this first campaign in the Mediterranean side, the second one, and the third, also for the 
in some tropical mines in the tropical area. First find, second one, third. First, uh, well, the communities are more similar in the tropical mines in both places, but also what we have seen is the area covered by the different sites is wider, it's much wider in the Mediterranean system. That suggests that the environmental component of the system is larger than in the but in the figure we have seen the area covered by the first, second, and third assembly combined in both systems. You can see this the, the wider or higher surface of the dots of the paper by in this environment. Well, uh, we have we are going to show some variables and the main both systems. Here is the conductivity, as most of you know, is equivalent of the salinity or represents the salinity of the system in yellow or, or, or orange color. We have represented the Mediterranean and green the tropical systems. As uh, you can see, the, uh, the flooding, middle, and drying um, season of the, of the year, of the hydrological cycle. Uh, so, this is the first combine, the second, and the third combine. And uh, for the conductivity, is higher in the Mediterranean sites. Uh, the transparency measured with the statue. Uh, it is also higher in the Mediterranean compared with the tropical system in all the, the different uh, sampling compounds for the different seasons. Uh, the water temperature obviously is higher in the tropical system and lower in the Mediterranean system, but in the Mediterranean system change a lot uh, with the hydrological cycle. Uh, for the oxygen, we have found uh, lower values of oxygen in the tropical system with the Mediterranean ones. Uh, we have also compared the pH, which was usually higher in the Mediterranean side. The uh, chlorophyll uh, was lower in the Mediterranean side with respect to the tropical system. Also, the nutrients were quite different in the systems. Well, these, these variables are examples of uh, uh, some of the variables that we have studied. We have done a comparison for most of them, and we are still analyzing data. And finally, to remark some of the conclusions of this study or, or this part of the environmental characterization of the forms. There are remarkable environmental differences between forms in both studied areas. Climatic features clearly separate from size, but other immunological variables, for instance, oxygen or floating vegetation or landscape variables as forest cover, also contribute to increase such differences. As expected, most environmental variables were also affected at time. Uh, our multivariate analysis suggests one range of variation in the environmental characteristics from this temperate Mediterranean area. Well, this is the, the, the end of, of my presentation. We will have four other presentations, around 20 minutes each, and at the end of the session, you will have time uh, to, to ask some questions to, to all of us. Thank you very much. Next talk, uh, it's about the, the, the diversity of uh, the different groups of organisms that we studied in this pond. Uh, the same ponds that Harry, my colleague, my friend, just showed you about uh, the different types of environment that we are studying in Mediterranean and, and, and tropical ponds. Uh, this talk will be about this, uh, the diversity of these ponds, both in the Mediterranean and tropical environments. And the next talk 
the next talk, sorry, by, by, uh, by Angel, will show the, uh, the combination of those, the environment and the spatial relationships with the species composition that we have in, in the ponds. So first of all, just in case that, uh, because these are, uh, this is an open session to, uh, to everybody from anywhere, anywhere in the world, and I guess that most, most of you are interested in biodiversity and you understand the main concepts of biological diversity. But just in case, I, was, I want to introduce a few concepts that we are uh, using in, in this study, which is uh, still unpublished. And uh, so it's very basic information that we gathered from this project. But for those of you that didn't uh, know very well the, the concepts, I wanted to stress that there are different ways to see uh, the biological diversity and the basic one is the, the what is called alpha diversity so here in the slide i'm showing one uh, site one pond which uh, uh, has a particular community made up of four species four different species so this would be the local diversity of the site called alpha uh, diversity but of course we are studying different uh, ponds and you can have a second pond and a third pond so we can have three different communities each of uh, each of which has a different uh, species composition with a different alpha alpha 2 in the second pond alpha 3 in the third pond and we can see that they have a different uh, uh, number of species which is one of the main basic ways to um, uh, to describe the diversity of a site of a community so for example here we have uh, three uh, species only in the second community, four species in the first and, and in the uh, third community. So they are differed in alpha diversity, not only in the number of species, but also in the composition, as you can see for, from the drawings. But this is only a way to see diversity. This is the most basic, but we can also take into account that the three communities, in our case, we are, uh, they belong to a whole set of communities which we call the meta community. And the meta community or the regional uh, diversity, the, the, the diversity of this meta community, as we are using the, ter the, the term of uh, gamma diversity in this case, which is the diversity of the whole uh, uh, area that we are studying for the whole uh, group of uh, communities that we are studying. So this is a different way to see the, the diversity, which is taking into account the whole number of species in uh, all the communities that we are analyzing. And this gamma diversity depends on many things, but it depends, of course, on alpha diversity. The, high, the higher the number of species of each pond, we expect a higher gamma diversity for the whole set of ponds, but also on the uh, different uh, differences between ponds, what is called this uh, uh, gamma diversity. So gamma diversity is an important part to take into account when you are analyzing the diversity of a region or a meta community, as in this case, because it's, it's telling you how different are the different sites, the different communities among them. Of course, we could have uh, a high alpha diversity, but we could have a low gamma diversity if all the sites had the same and species composition. And in this case, we see that this is not the case. We can have uh, um, a site uh, one, site two, which differ in the species that they have. For example, they share two species, but there are three different species which they don't share. And this would contribute to beta diversity and finally to gamma diversity because of this change between uh, communities. In the case of, of, of uh, beta 2, 3, comparing between sites 2 and 3, we have that they differ in alpha diversity, 3 and 4 species, also like in the case of 1 and 2. But in this case, they share three species. So they only differ in one species, which is this little yellow bee here, right? So there are different uh, ways that we can study diversity. And we are going to show you a few uh, examples of uh, what we are doing with these uh, um, um, ponds in Mediterranean and, and um, tropical environments to see if they differ in alpha, beta, and gamma diversity. And of course, we expect they do. Why? Because uh, tropical environments are expected to have much higher diversity than the Mediterranean 
environments, in this case, uh, or specifically ponds. This is a, an, I'm showing you an example of the distribution of the of diversity in the world, a study based on um, uh, terrestrial vertebrates, I think, or vertebrate, vertebrates, but it could be similar to the distribution of uh, vegetation or of, uh, diversity in the world. And, and so we expect that uh, sites at lower uh, latitude would have a much higher diversity that sites at a higher latitude, what is called the latitudinal diversity gradient, which all of you know, because if you are interested in biogeography, sure you know about that. But this is as, uh, based mainly on terrestrial environments and invertebrates and, and plants. But there is not much work done for, uh, in this way about the uh, aquatic environment, aquatic freshwater environments in the, in the, in the land. And uh, especially in different groups of organisms, which are not so well known as vertebrates or uh, plants. And here is the locations of the two study sites, two study areas. In the Mediterranean, we expect lower diversity, even if uh, it's uh, an area with higher diversity than other uh, temperate environments so for the same latitude. We expect lower diversity than in the ponds located in tropical uh, Central America in, in Costa Rica. So we have a series of uh, expectations of hypotheses uh, to, to meet when, you, uh, when we analyze the data that we gather from the different ponds. And one of these is that uh, tropical um, ponds would have a local diversity much higher than Mediterranean ponds. So alpha uh, in, 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 in tropical ponds would be higher than alpha diversity in Mediterranean ponds. About uh, what about uh, gamma diversity? Of course, uh, gamma diversity we expect also to be higher in tropical ponds than in Mediterranean ponds. As we saw this picture of the world, this is the depicting is showing mainly gamma diversity rather than uh, alpha diversity because of the high uh, scale geographical scale. But what could we w uh, expect about uh, beta diversity? Would be the sites in the Mediterranean. Uh, have, would they have uh, lower diversity? They will be more similar among them, or the sites in the tropical environment will be um, more different uh, or more, more similar among them? What would, it, would we expect? Well, from uh, previous works, we would expect then the beta diversity would be also higher in tropical than in Mediterranean ponds, at least following this work by Kraft and collaborators, which we, in which we see that. Uh, uh, the latitudinal diversity gradient applies not only to alpha, mean alpha diversity and to gamma diversity, in this case for plants, but also to beta diversity, which uh, it's uh, declining with uh, latitude because different slopes of gamma and alpha diversity. However, we are not so sure about that because this is plants, as I said, there is not much work done in in ponds and in many groups of invertebrates or plankton algae, etc. And we see that uh, in the Mediterranean, as, as Javi showed you before, in the, the precipitations are much higher in the tropical environments. And this could have an implications in connectivity. So this is a picture of a, a pond in, that we studied in another previous uh, uh, project in Nicaragua. And you see that uh, in, well, they can be quite isolated in the dry season when they start or when they are finishing the hydro period. But in high, heavy rains, which are much more important in tropical than in uh, Mediterranean areas, they could get connected more easily than uh, the isolated ponds that we find in the dry Mediterranean environments, uh, with some exceptions, of course. So we could think that. If there is a higher connectivity between ponds in uh, tropical environments, then this could have implications on beta diversity, because the, high, the higher the connectivity, the uh, more possibilities the species have to go from one side to another and colonize and become similar environments. So there is a higher chance of homogenization of the diversity in ponds located in areas where they have more connectivity, which we could expect from these heavy rains in tropical environments. Okay, so let's uh, see also more uh, expectations. Uh, it's not only comparing, we are not uh, wanting to compare 
uh, tropical uh, compared to, uh, to Mediterranean ponds, but we are also sampling through time, at the beginning, at the middle, and at the end of the hydro period. And we are interested in how is this changing, because meta communities are not uh, stat static, um, uh, uh, it's not a static concept, it's not a, a group of organisms that, that don't change through time. Meta communities are dynamic and they can change through time. And uh, from uh, a succession theory and in ecology, uh, there are many studies in after a, uh, that show that uh, ecosystems after a disturbance, like this the drying of a pond in our case, they could uh, grow, uh, incre increasing the, uh, the diversity with time. So we expect that uh, alpha diversity, in this case, in uh, the first period, would be lower than alpha diversity in the second period, and lower than alpha diversity at the third period. So we, we expect an increase in, in alpha diversity for the different ponds, both in uh, temporary, uh, permanent, uh, sorry, in, in, uh, in Mediterranean or in um, tropical environments. Because of this uh, increase in alpha diversity for each pond, we, increase, we expect also an increase in gamma diversity through time, from the from the uh, flooding until the drying of the of the pond, but we uh, would not expect the same about beta diversity. If we think that uh, uh, after a pond is filled and there is uh, some uh, increase in species from from the egg bank, from the seed bank in the sediment, and then some species can grow and and go to another pond and colonize other ponds then we could expect that the different ponds at the beginning could be more different. So have, uh, we could have a higher beta diversity for the meta community. And this beta diversity could be uh, going down uh, with time because of the homogenization, um, homogenization of the different ponds. For example, we can have um, uh, dance and fly or uh, um, some insect that could go to another pond flying, lay some eggs, go to another pond, lay some more eggs, and the community becomes more homogenized in, this, in that way. Okay, also for the amphibians and other organisms that can go to, from one pond to another once they are establishing populations. Let's see what uh, if we uh, uh, found, uh, if we found these expectations in the stuff, uh, the uh, tropical and Mediterranean temporary ponds that Javi showed you before, and just uh, Repeating here more or less the same the same maps with the distribution of ponds in the uh, tropical Costa Rica and in the, the Mediterranean of uh, Valencia and eastern Spain. So we analyzed more or less the same number of ponds, the same uh, surface area, geographically uh, speaking, using of course the same method, the same specialists, uh, counting and determining the different groups of organisms. And we studied many different groups of organisms. Uh, using different techniques, which I summarize here, and I will also show only a, a small amount of uh, of information for the main groups. But you can see that we studied uh, using, for example, next generation sequencing, uh, different groups of prokaryotic organisms. We also studied phytoplankton, different groups like diatoms or chlorophysians, cyanophysians. We analyze the composition of species of rotifers, this is a small invertebrates, other arthropod invertebrates in the ponds, like crustacean, different groups of uh, crustaceans dwelling in the branchiopods and ostracods, and uh, uh, larger invertebrates, macroinvertebrates, uh, including mollusks, including, including mainly uh, different species of insects, which we analyze in depth for, for some groups like. Uh, uh, Chironomids, but um, I only showing you here some uh, uh, information, and then of course also amphibians uh, as, uh, as the main group of vertebrates in everything uh, these ponds. Let's see what uh, what uh, look what does it look like the alpha diversity and then gamma beta and gamma diversity for this for these ponds. And as uh, Javi showed you before for the water chemistry, I'm showing the tropical ponds in green color and uh, here, and the Mediterranean ponds in brown color, or, uh, in, in, in this case, for alpha diversity. This is an example of alpha diversity for archaea, for this group of prokaryotic organisms. And for each uh, 
uh, setting, I'm showing the uh, alpha diversity in three different types of indexes. First, a species richness, uh, most basic uh, index use, and it's uh, related to the uh, uh, order zero of uh, diversity for those of you that know this uh, terminology. Then we have um, uh, alpha diversity of order one and alpha diversity of order two. For those of you that are not familiar with this, uh, the difference between these three uh, indexes is in the first case, we study only if the species are present or absent. So this is only if we have a species or not. And in these two indexes to the right, we are showing the relative abundances or that how, how the diversity is influenced by the relative abundances of the different species. So uh, this is uh, the exponential of uh, Shannon entropy, and this is uh, the uh, inverse of uh, dominance. So this is uh, equivalent or, or similar to Shannon, or for those of you that know, and this is uh, related to Simpson diversity. And the more to the right, uh, or when analyzing the alpha diversity in these uh, different indexes, the higher the order of diversity, the most uh, is the effect of uh, dominant species in the estimation of diversity, right? Uh, so we have large differences in uh, the number of individuals for different species, then the lower the diversity we will have uh, in these indexes, okay? So in this example, we show how um, the diversity of archaea in tropical ponds, the alpha diversity in terms of the number of species is higher than the uh, diversity in terms of species richness in the Mediterranean ponds as we expected. How this is not exactly the same for uh, uh, alpha diversity measure taking into account the species composition and the number of individuals. It seems that it's more balanced number of individuals in the case of archaea uh, in the Mediterranean than in tropical ponds. So we have higher diversity in Mediterranean than in tropical ponds for archaea uh, with about, uh, I don't know, like uh, 10, um, more or less 10, 20 uh, equivalent species in the Mediterranean compared to the uh, uh, five or 10, I don't know, the number of species equivalents in the, uh, in, the, in the tropical ponds. Uh, besides the difference between the, the, the tropical and Mediterranean ponds, we can also uh, show that uh, the, uh, uh, the change uh, uh, between seasons, what we expected, is that uh, here there is a relative increase, more or less clear, some of some cases are not so clear, but there is an increase in species richness in archaea through time, what we expected. It's not so clear for tropical in the case of, uh, of uh, 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 the diversity of order one, but it's more or less also pattern, pattern constant in uh, increasing diversity in the Mediterranean ponds. Let's see, this is uh, just an, an example. I'm, sure I'm going to show you other groups, other examples. And this was just to see how, the, how these uh, graphs are, are organized. So you can see the higher uh, number of uh, tax, in this case, or operational taxonomic units in the case of probiotic organisms. But for the other organisms, we see also the higher diversity in terms of number of species in the bacteria, in phytoplankton, in rotifers, in macroinvertebrates, in Mediterranean compared to in mean, amphibians. But there are some groups, like some uh, little crustaceans in which there is not so clear change or difference between tropical and Mediterranean environments in terms of alpha diversity, like in these uh, branchiopods and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and ostracods. And if we check uh, the, how, uh, how diver the diversity is changing uh, through time, we saw this increase in archaea, but apparently there is also an increase in bacteria in tropical, but not in Mediterranean environments, but for phyto phytoplankton, we also have this increase in rotifers also very clear, in branchiopods, more or less clear, but not so much, neither in ostracos in tropical environments, but in microinvertebrates again and again in, in some uh, subgroups, not so clear in amphibia, at least in, in tropical, but yes, also increase in Mediterranean uh, ponds. So this is about uh, alpha diversity, and let's see well, many species riches, I'm going uh, uh, too fast maybe, but uh, 
You can see also that if we take into account the number of species, there are also some of these patterns that hold for some groups, but not, not for, for others, right? Let's see what happens to um, a diversity. We, so here we are comparing between two ponds for each uh, combination of ponds in the, in the in both meta communities. Again, green, tropical, and uh, brown the Mediterranean ponds, and uh, we see that uh, um, it's not what we expected from the previous work on plants. Uh, we here found a lower beta diversity in the Mediterranean compared to the tropical. Uh, sorry, sorry, in the tropical compared to the Mediterranean ponds. Not always. It happens in archaea. It's not so clear in, in bacteria. Even we can see a smaller diversity in the in the Mediterranean. But it seems that also in phytoplankton, in rotifers, not so much in in, uh, in branchiopods, but also in ostracods or in other invertebrates like insects, we find as a higher diversity, beta diversity. So uh, ponds. Uh, pond communities are more different between them in the Mediterranean, in the case of uh, some groups, than in tropical environments. Even for amphibians, we have uh, a similar beta diversity or even higher in some cases uh, in uh, the Mediterranean ponds. And finally, if we check what's uh, going on with gamma diversity with these rarefaction curves, actually I'm showing here a combination of alpha, beta, and gamma diversity. But if we focus on um, on some particular value of uh, the number of uh, samples to uh, the standard size or to control the sampling effort, effort uh, we see that in general, uh, and the diversity, the gamma diversity is also higher in uh, tropical than in Mediterranean environments in general for many, for, for many groups. But for some groups, it's not so clear. Again, we have these uh, microcrustaceans for which there is an overlapping between temporary ponds in tropical and Mediterranean environments. Some of them could be higher, lower in terms of diversity. But uh, again, the pattern holds in, in other invertebrates or in amphibians with a maximum number of a few of less than 10 species in the Mediterranean compared with several tens of a species in the uh, tropical environments. And if we have a look also what happens through time, in this case, uh, gamma diversity of the meta community is changing through time. But uh, it's not clear the, the pattern of change in beta diversity. We see that in Archaea, for example, is decreasing beta diversity through time, but in the, in the tropical, but it's increasing in the Mediterranean environments. And however, in the case of bacteria, it's the reverse. We have a decreasing uh, gamma diversity in bacteria in the Mediterranean uh, compared to the, to the archaea, right? And there, is, there are some cases in which the uh, pattern is so heterogeneous that there is no, no, no clear pattern. Again, in amphibia, we have this decrease in, in gamma diversity. However, in, um, in what effects, we have a change to time, which is uh, towards an increase, both in Mediterranean and tropical. So there is not clear pattern here. So for conclusions, yes, we, I'm, I'm already running out of time. Uh, briefly uh, uh, summarizing the conclusions, we find alpha diversity to be higher in tropical than in Mediterranean ponds, but not in all groups. We find that, however, beta diversity, uh, it's contrary to the expectations. We have a lower beta diversity or, even, or similar in tropical compared to Mediterranean ponds, particularly for some groups. And gamma diversity, as expected, is higher in tropical compared to Mediterranean uh, groups. And change, uh, change between seasons, we have, in general, an increase of alpha diversity through time after this uh, disturbance of the dry of the ponds. And uh, we have declining beta diversity through time, but not, uh, not in all cases. And uh, there are changes in gamma diversity uh, through time, but not a clear pattern. So we have to be very careful and uh, we have to understand that beta communities are changing through time. So we cannot expect to sample only once and have a clear pattern uh, of a meta community, in the, at least in the case of uh, this uh, dynamic meta communities. Thank you very much. I will be uh, uh, open, uh, expecting any questions at the end of this uh, session. And now I would like to uh, ask my 
my colleague Angel to speak to, uh, to you about uh, the uh, meta communities and the relationship between species and environment, etc. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for attending this group of conferences. I'm Angel Galvez, and I'm going to continue talking about the environmental and special effects on the species distribution under this meta community framework. Here, I will present some of the results we have found during our project. Classically, niche selection has been considered the main process of structuring local communities. In other words, the presences and abundances uh, of the species were considered to be determined mostly by the effect of the local environment. However, uh, real communities can be difficult to understand by means only of local environment. If we take a look at this photo of the Okavango Delta in Botswana, individual water bodies can be studied, can't be studied isolatedly from the network ecosystems. In fact, uh, connectivity and dispersal are crucial to understand these aquatic habitats, but also every ecosystem. Thus, sorry, local communities are not only structured by the tolerance of the species towards environmental factors. Other processes, working at local and regional scales, can also influence species composition in local patches of habitat. For example, dispersal from other patches is a key factor for both dispersal limitation or dispersal surplus that can influence community structure. In addition, random fluctuations in local populations or ecological drift can be a strong process in community dynamics. As for environmental control, at local scale, it can filter species composition, but at regional scale, environmental heterogeneity and on patches can strongly influence meta community dynamics. Thus, understanding species distribution needs a local and a regional approach to be entirely understood. As a consequence, the meta community theory with the meta community concept as a group of communities linked by dispersal of interacting species gains relevance. To sum up, Local communities composition is the result of multiple processes working at different spatiotemporal scales. Global species pool is constrained by environmental, dispersal, and neutral processes into a regional species pool. These three main processes also work at meta community and local community level structuring community composition. One of the major aims in community in meta community ecology is to quantify the role of each process in meta community structure. One of the most spread methods is the use of variation partition analysis. Um, in a few words, it's an ordination method that allows to quantify the percentage of observed variation explained by two or more sets of variables or components. As a result, Variation partition analysis gives information about four different percentages of variance. On the one hand, uh, the percentage of variance explained by the pure component one, independent from the component two. Uh, in, on the other hand, the percentage of variance explained by pure component two, independent from component one. Uh, in addition, uh, it gives the percentage of overlapping variance explained by both components. And finally, the percentage of observed variants that cannot be explained by our measured variables. In meta community studies, the simplest partition analysis are done using environmental and spatial variables as components one and two. In this example, 30% of variants is explained by pure environmental processes. 10% is explained by purely spatial processes independent from the environment, and the 10% uh, is explained by overlapping environmental and spatial processes, mainly a uh, spatialized environment. The remaining 60% uh, of variance and is unexplained uh, and can be assigned to unmeasured variables or processes that have not, have not been taken into account. 
in our project, we are applying this metacognitive approach to temporary ponds and aquatic habitat with well delimited spatial and temporary boundaries. In addition, we are comparing tropical uh, to temporary ponds in order to test uh, if these patterns, if there are patterns that follow a similar trend between the geographic regions, despite there are some obvious environmental differences that habitats explain before. We are working with meta communities of several taxa, including prokaryons, planktonic species, macroinvertebrates, and vertebrates. Our main hypothesis, uh, uh, we can say that we expect differences between organisms. On the one hand, who dispersers are able to reach, uh, are able to, to disperse farther than bad dispersers, so their distribution will not be limited by dispersal. Uh, but environmental control. Uh, we assume that dispersal ability increases with size in flying active dispersers and decreases with size in, of the propagul in passive dispersers. On the other hand, dispersers, uh, bad dispersal distribution will be limited by dispersal ability, while they won't be much affected by the environment once they reach a new path. Uh, we will consider as bad dispersers as bad dispersers, uh, sorry, big passive dispersers, or small active dispersers or aquatic active dispersers. This uh, expected pattern was found by the VIAN collaborators working on Belgian uh, ponds, and we expected to find a similar pattern in our tropical and Mediterranean ponds. On the other hand, we expected uh, differences between regions. As for spatial effects, it is assumed to be important in isolated systems such as uh, temporary ponds due to dispersal limitation. As a consequence, we expect it to find a stronger spatial effects in, in Mediterranean ponds than in tropical ponds. This is a tropical temporary pond in Nicaragua during the dry season, and this is the same temporary pond during the rainy season. The heavy rains that produce large floods in these uh, tropical ecosystems may increase connectivity between ponds even for bad dispersers. So we expect it reduces spatial effects. As for environmental effects, we expect it they will be higher in Mediterranean ponds due to a higher uh, expected environmental heterogeneity. In addition, we expect it that these environmental effects uh, were higher than spatial effects. For this purpose, we surveyed 30 tropical temporary ponds in Costa Rica in June of 2007 and 17, and uh, 32 Mediterranean temporary ponds in Spain in January of 2018, two weeks after the filling of the ponds. In every pond, we took biological uh, information of uh, 23 groups, including archaea of the sediment and the water column bacteria of the sediment and the water column, phytoplankton, including cyanobacteria, chlorophyte, mixotropic phytoplankton, and diatomia. Uh, we also studied rotifers, calorosirans, copepods, octopods, and macroinvertebrates, including mollusks and insects, which, which also included paleopterans, heteropterans, coleopterans, dipterans, with a special focus on phytoplankton. Uh, on the field, we see to survey amphibian and bird uh, communities. For each pond, we measure 49 environmental variables as well as four spatial variables. We use latitude and longitude in order to build uh, distance based moral and vector maps. These moral and vector maps or MEMS are orthogonal spatial variables that give nonlinear uh, non information. These two sets of variables went through a forward selection and we perform a variation partition analysis using distance based redundance analysis and more an spectral randomization in order to reduce spurious correlations between space and environment. Sorry. As a result, we found the percentages explained by environmental variables independent from space in blue, the percentage of variance explained by pure environmental variables independent from the environment in red, 
and the overlap between environment and space. We think uh, this probably related with uh, specialized environments such as climate variables. In general, we find higher total percentages of variance explained in Mediterranean ponds, uh, uh, but we find um, that environment and space are important in both regions and groups, even for uh, small prokaryotes. We can visually observe that, uh, some interesting patterns. For example, it seems that spatial processes are stronger in tropical groups, while the environment seems to be higher in Mediterranean taxa. Overlappings are usually high, which is quite inconvenient because it's difficult to compare environment and space. We can see some groups with similar proportions of variance explained by the two components, uh, for example, crustaceans. Uh, there are tipos, copepods, and ostracods. And one interesting pattern is that both archaean bacteria from the sediment are more spatially structured than prokaryotes from the water column in both, reach, in both regions. Now I'm going to deepen in this resource in order to statistically test uh, some of the initial hypotheses. Here we present a percentage of variance explained by the pure environmental component in relation to the percentage of variance explained by the pure spatial component. If you remember, the pattern found by the DIA collaborators were small passive dispersers, or big active dispersers were more influenced by environment than space. Uh, you can see here that we can find that pattern. And if we uh, represent the same data, in the same axis for Mediterranean ponds, we don't find that pattern either. If we compare these two pure components in regions and between them, we found a, a significant higher environmental effect uh, than spatial in both regions, only significant uh, in Mediterranean ponds. As for spatial effects, uh, it seems to be higher uh, in tropical ponds, although not significantly. However, uh, pure environmental effects are significantly higher in Mediterranean ponds. In order to test this is caused by a uh, higher environmental density in temperate ponds, we perform a beta dispersion analysis, and we found that uh, there were a significantly higher density in Mediterranean ponds which supports our initial hypothesis. When comparing these two components between regions and of dispersal, we found no differences between active and passive dispersers from Mediterranean ponds. We can say that type of dispersion is not correlated, is not related sorry, with higher or lower environmental or spatial control in Mediterranean ponds. Although environmental effects are significantly, significantly higher uh, than spatial effects. For tropical organisms, passive dispersers seem to be more environmentally controlled, although spatial effects are equally strong for both groups. When comparing passive dispersers from both regions, uh, despite observing some differences between them, this resulted to be non significant. Uh, suggesting that space and environment play a similar role in passive dispersers from both regions. Finally, regarding active dispersers, we found significant differences for both spatial and environmental effects. In the one hand, environmental components seem to be higher in Mediterranean forms, maybe because of the previously mentioned environmental identity. On the other hand, spatial effects appear to be unexpectedly higher in tropical forms. We suggest that active dispersers find stronger dispersal barriers in tropics. Daniel Jensen proposed in 1967 that mountains are higher in tropics in a sense that, on the one hand, species are adapted to more stable climatic conditions than in temperate regions, especially temperature. On the other hand, altitudinal changes in climate are more pronounced in tropics. As a consequence, organisms will find more difficulties to go through these geographic barriers. Our results and this hypothesis are common. To conclude, 
we find that temporary bonds community meta communities are spatially structured, but need processes are stronger than spatial processes. In addition, environmental and spatial effects are variable between taxonomy groups and they do not follow any trend according to the type of dispersal. We found that the environmental effects are higher in the Mediterranean organisms, maybe because a higher uh, environmental heterogeneity in Mediterranean meta communities. And finally, uh, we found that the spatial effects are higher in tropical active dispersers, maybe because uh, the presence of a stronger, a stronger dispersal barriers in tropical uh, systems. And thank you very much. I uh, hope you like uh, this presentation. Hello, everybody. I'm Maria, and I'm going to talk about uh, the hatching experiment that we carried out uh, of the western stages of, of, of the organisms that we have in temporary forms, and how this is related with the active community of the pond. As we have already seen, Temporary ponds are characterized by a dry period and a period with water, in which a plant and animal community can develop. But this is that we have in this temporary pond must be well adapted to overcome uh, this, this vulnerable period without water. So some species, um, can, can leave the pond, but there are others that can move easily. So these species must be well adapted to to overcome this unfavorable period, this the loss of water. Here you can see some some examples of the species that we really have worked uh, in in our project: rotifers, uh, Anastasians, copepods, cladoceras, and ostracods. Many of these aquatic invertebrates generate crossing stages that remain in the sediment of the bone. Then, when the favorable period returns, some of these eggs uh, hatch, and the active community of, the, of this aquatic invertebrate is restored. Taking uh, this into account, we wonder how similar these both assemblies are uh, the active community and in the water column. Uh, the organs that live in the water column and the egg bank, uh, the community of the hatching experiment that we carry about. So, in one hand, it could be possible that the active community uh, includes all the diversity of the egg bank. Uh, this can happen because it could be difficult to represent all the heterogeneity of the active community with a few sediment samples. On the other hand, it could be possible that the egg bank includes uh, all the diversity of the active community. This can happen because of the temporality, because uh, the egg bank can accumulate western stages during years, but the active community is only uh, uh, present during a few weeks or, or months. On the third case that we propose, is that some species, both assemblies have some species in common, but there are others that are exclusive of one or another assemblage. Closely related with this is the sampling effort of both the water column and the, and the, and the sediment. So we also wonder uh, if the sediment sampling effort is enough to assess the diversity of these ponds, or if uh, these two techniques are complementary as indicated in some previous studies with botifers and cladoceras. Another point that we want to see is if there are uh, some taxa that are more easily found or easily detected in one assemblage or another. And finally, we also want to determine the biodiversity at the local and the regional level. 
So for that, we analyze the alpha diversity of each point uh, separately, the beta diversity to compare uh, the diversity between points, and gamma diversity to get an idea of the diversity at the beta community level. So in our study, we include 32 temporary points distributed uh, throughout the east of the Iberian Peninsula in the Mediterranean region. And each of these points was sampled at least in two different moments, from January to February to collect the water quality samples, and from September to November to collect the sediment samples. Uh, in each point, we selected uh, six different sites, three of them in the littoral zone, and the other three in the shallow in the shallow area. I'm sorry, in the deepest area. So with this, with these sediment samples, we carried out the the hatching experiment. This kind of experiment, uh, we carried out this experiment to simulate the the, the filling of the of the pond during the favorable period. Uh, that induce the, the hatching of the resting stages that remain in the sediment. So for this, we put some sediment in containers with water, and all these containers, uh, we put them in the in control chambers to control the light and the temperature. We set a, 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 a cycle of 12 hours light at 24 degrees, and, and 12 hours darkness at 80 degrees. Uh, this experiment was carried out during 30, sorry, 28 days uh, and to avoid the reproduction and the competition of the individuals at Hatch, we uh, uh, did some revisions. In each of these reviews, uh, we expect the individuals um, to avoid the, this, the reproduction. Uh, we fix them uh, with alcohol to identify the later. In total, we counted uh, 138 taxa uh, belonging to the groups that we have mentioned before: rotifers, cladoferans, ostracots, copepods, and rotifers. And then stuff So, 95 of this of these taxa were found in the air bank and APA were found in the active community. 25 of these 148 taxa were, were, were shared by both assemblies, 60 were exclusive of the MPAM, and 53 were exclusive of the active community. We also carried out a permanent analysis that indicates uh, that these both assemblies uh, have some differences. In this PCOA, we, uh, we represent the samples of the, of the hatching experiment with blue points and the samples of the active community with green points. And we can see here a partial overlap between them, but most of them are separated, as indicated in the permanent analysis. In this other PCOA, uh, we add the, the values of chat. So we can see which one are shared, uh, uh, which ones are, are exclusive of one or, one or another assemblage. And we also carried out a uh, similarity percentage analysis. Uh, this kind of analysis um, let us know if which ones of these of this taxa contribute more to the differences between both assemblies. So here we can see that uh, with only two species, almost 50% of the differences between the active community and the F bank are already explained. For example, um, uh, the family of Ostratocyclidae and the Rotifer lecanicula are taxa exclusive of the F bank, only occurring in the hatch experiment. There are others like Acanthocyclops americanus or the Acyclops lupus pilatus that only appear in the active community. But of course, there are some species or some taxa that appear in both assemblies, like Metanthiclos minutus or the Clauseran alone elements. So, from our result, we have seen that 
if those assemblies uh, isn't a partial overlap that make us uh, that make them different assemblies. These differences can be explained for several reasons. On one hand, uh, we can find some species in the egg bank that do not appear in the active community because of the temporality. The egg bank can accumulate western stages during, during years, but the pond is only full of water uh, during a few weeks or months. So the active community has less temporal representation than the egg bank. On the other hand, we can find some species, some species in the active community that don't appear in the egg bank. It could be possible, for example, for the colonization of Tatsa with our with our resting stages that arrive to the pond by wind or animal dispersion from other ponds. Another reason is, is that part of the sample that did not sample. Um, so, so some species can remain in these parts of the of the pond that are not sampled because they still have some uh, sediment moisture. For example, uh, the western stage of some species of of copper pots, uh, the western stage is a is a state of juvenile state. So these organisms can be found in the active community but do not appear in the ecbank. Another thing is that in these temporary ponds, there are few species that are dominant and the rest are scant. So the big bank is scant too. Um, there are some species that have patchy distribution because they prefer one part of the, of the pond or another. So this can make differences between both as industries. Uh, there are also some species that maybe have uh, some specific hatching conditions that was not covered during the experiment. So these species do not appear in the advance. But in addition to all of this, we have to take into account that um, can be species that, uh, that are more easily found in one type of sampling or another. For example, the, there are some species of cladocerans that are ventricular variants. So during the samples of the water column with the zooplankton so handnet, they can be underestimated. And the same can happen with some species of, of rotifers that inhabit in the, in the sediment. But we also want to, uh, to determine the um, the diversity of these of these kinds of forms. So in this plot, we show you the alpha diversity profile for the active community in green and for the egg bank in blue. For the first three orders of diversity, order zero represents the species richness. Order one is the exponential, channel exponential, and order two is the inverse of the dominance. So here we can see that for the for the order zero, uh, these both assemblies uh, do not present uh, significant differences. This means that uh, both assemblies shows uh, more or less the the same number of species. But for the other two orders, um, the significant the, the differences are significant. This means that for the infa. Uh, we can find uh, that the species are more or less uh, uh, have, have more or less the same abundance. Uh, or in other words, that in the active community there are more dominant species than in the egg bank. And this can be explained because in the active community can have some factors like dominant, like uh, predation, like uh, reproduction, competition in general. That, do not, that can make some species dominant uh, than others, more, more dominant than others. But in the egg bank, uh, we can find these, these factors because uh, during the experiment, we extract each individual shortly after hatching. 
So uh, in this in this kind of in the experiment, we the, the individual attack hat cannot reproduce and cannot compete. But we also want to determine the diversity between between bonds. So here we show you the, the science and text for for the bar in blue and for the active community in green. But we also want to compare the diversity with each form of with with itself. I mean, we compare the the sample of the uh, of the hatching experiment and the sample of the active community. So we, here we can see that both assemblies have uh, uh, a sensing index close to one. This means that each form in, in one pond we can find some species and in other ponds we can find other species. And this makes that when we compare uh, the pond with itself, that the, this is per page, uh, then the, the index is, is higher, the, the, the diversity is higher. And finally, we also uh, calculated the attraction curve for both assemblies again to get an idea of the of the uh, diversity at the meta community level. So in this plot, we can see uh, overlap between the um, the, the um, between both between both assemblies. The, the, the active community, sorry, and the advanced. So this can make us think that for the same effort, uh, the, the, the both assemblies present the more or less the same number of species. But we also calculated the Carlos index. Uh, this index is an estimator of the number of species that we will find if we add more localities and we add more forms to our, to our study. So in this case, here, the advanced showed more, more uh, number of species than the active community, and they do not overlap. This means that if we increase the number of forms, the, the cube will, will be separated, and we will find more species in the advanced than in the active community. So in conclusion, we have seen that uh, these both assemblies, the active community and the advanced, uh, has a different species composition and uh, make them a different assemblage. But if we want to, to know the, or to assess the diversity of this kind of pond, the coral ponds, we should uh, sample the water column and the sediment because as we have seen, uh, they are complementary techniques. And we also show you the potential of these kind of ponds to host high levels of diversity at the regional, at, at local and local level. So this makes important the, the, the presence of, of good management plans to preserve these kind of ponds in order to, to maintain the, the high level of diversity. I hope you have found it interesting and thank you very much. Hi hey everybody and thanks for joining to this to this session. Uh, then we uh, we are going to start with one with this question. Uh, one of the central issues in ecology is to understand special and temporal patterns of biodiversity. It is well known that the species composition of ecological communities vary between different places and through time. And we wonder which are the ecological processes underlying these patterns. This question maybe was the same behind this famous uh, the pointer yeah. uh, behind this famous illustration of Humboldt, where he represented the spatial distribution of plants depending on the altitude and the climatic conditions of each part of the Chimborazo, the highest mountain in Ecuador. It's exciting to see how similar biogeographical questions have encouraged pioneers and posterior researchers to study biodiversity patterns until nowadays, and they will surely continue to do so in the future. 
The present talk is about which processes determine this variation among groups of communities, as known as meta communities, in space and also in time, and how the observational scales used, such as temporal extent of the study, change our perception of these processes. Well, we are going to start with a very basic uh, question. What variation means to us in meta communities? Well, in the present example, we have three sites in which we record the following abundances of species A and B. And here, variation should be a measure of how different are the records in each place. For this silly example, the site species metric should be something like this. And the total variation of this matrix is the sum of the variation of each species. Uh, this variation could occur through space. Uh, this variation occurs through space, so it is, in this case, a spatial variation. But we could be also interested in temporal variation. In this case, it is always the same size through time. And we can calculate variation as with the spatial data, but this is temporal variation. Um, as biodiversity varies in space and time, in our project we're interested in both spatial and temporal variation altogether. And then our species matrix is something like this. Our species matrices are something like this. And here the total variation is spatial but also for us to say spatial temporal variation. And now we are between two extremes. extremes. Now that I've changed the colors for a better visualization of the variation. On the left, meta communities with all the variation in, in the spatial axis, there's no uh, temporal variation here. And on the right, meta communities with all the variation in the temporal axis, there's no spatial variation. Uh, it's relatively easy to know where our data is in this gradient by means of an ANOVA with two factors two factors, uh, space and time. Using, uh, here we are using only species A. Uh, here you can see how all the variation was accumulated in space, uh, being significant this factor, but on the other side, all the variation is accumulated in, was accumulated in time. Uh, but normally, the meta communities are in the middle with neither totally temporal uh, or spatial, uh, which is uh, spatial temporal. Uh, this interesting references, uh, they will deal with that. They are, they are very interesting. And in this talk, we are going to deal with these two important questions. These two important questions. First, uh, which ecological processes drive this meta community variation? And after, when each ecological process is relatively more important or relevant than the, than the others? For the first, meta community variation is a consequence of a complex interaction of different ecological, ecological processes, such as niche related self selection and kind of specific interactions, and ecological drift and dispersal. And dispersal. Uh, using, we can represent the total uh, meta community variation as at the surface of a square measuring one to standardize the size of the total variation. We can part this variation in several fractions attributed to different ecological processes. Using the environmental variables of each sample, uh, we could determine which fraction is explained by the environment, fraction associated, associated with selection or environmental filtering, and the rest of the variation remains unexplained and is related to stochastic processes, such as ecological drift or demographic stochasticity. There are many statistical methods to do that, although the most commonly used in, for this, in this context are ordination approaches, such as RDA or CCA. In these methods, we obtain an, a square which is the proportion explained by the explanatory variables. In this case, the, the micromental variables. And consequently, the proportion left is the residual fraction or the proportion undetermined. The sum of these two parts of variation, of variation is explained or unexplained uh, should be sum one, in this case. 
uh, the main contribution of the metacognitive concept to community ecology is to consider both local and regional processes as drivers of biodiversity variation. Among the regional processes, dispersal among sites is very important. Uh, if we consider that the species A and B, uh, if we consider that the species A and B have the different niche, each species could be having different size depending on the environmental conditions. Some dispersal among signs is important for colonizing very fast suitable patches. With due to uh, stochastic processes or temporal environmental changes, could be rest in its habitat on time. Consequently, with this dispersal rate, this moderate dispersal rate, the environmental fraction should be there. The, the species data is, is fitted with the environmental data. With dispersal surplus, some species could inhabit uh, places with suboptimal conditions because the populations are restricted from suitable uh, size, like this, this one. Uh, the, the reduces the environmental field with the species data. There are individuals living uh, in suitable conditions. On the other side, the special limitation could delay the colonization or restrict the spatial distribution of the species, favoring alternative states of the isolated, uh, isolated sites. The sites that are occupied by similar species with the same niche requirements like here uh, species C, that is equivalent of these species. Uh, that also reduces the environmental fit with the species data. There are suitable uh, sites that are non occupied. The special limitation could create clear broad state spatial pattern without any associa association with the environmental filtering because isolated uh, communities could raise different alternative states. Uh, with adequate special variables, we can detect this broad scale spatial variation using these variables as we did. Uh, with the environmental variables. We usually use MEMs for this purpose, which are based on a spatial, uh, net, a spatial networks of how sites are connected uh, each other among them. And this is an example of, of MEMs in, in a river and different colors uh, represent the, the different values for, for each for its, uh, spatial variable. And we can see these special patterns, uh, these different special patterns. So these special variables may catch a part of the undetermined variation society with broad scale special patterns, maybe created by uh, this dispersal limitation. However, these variables could also explain a part of the variation a society with broad, uh, uh, with, with environmentally, especially. Uh, structured variables. Uh, this, this overlap, uh, we consider this overlap as the shared fraction between environment and space. We can also consider the temporal patterns of one place and use MEMs as temporal variables. Temporal patterns can be independent of the environmental situations, uh, phenology, life history strategies, um, demographic stochasticity, or the resistance of some communities to change may originate an imbalance between environmental and the species composition. And these variables could explain uh, this temporal uh, variation. So this is another interesting fraction that we can detect the temporal part with its shared part with the environment like this. But we want to integrate both uh, approaches or strategies in one, a special temporal view of the meta communities. Consequently, we are interested in all these fractions of the total meta community. All these fractions of the, the total uh, meta community variation. For this purpose, we try to create special temporal MEMs for this data. Uh, we just published this paper where we developed this extension of MEMs. Uh, the connection network of spatial temporal data should be something like this, with the spatial links uh, represented in, in red and uh, temporal links in, uh, in blue. Uh, with these links, we can calculate MEMs as usual. 
This is a very basic temporal connection, uh, connection network. Temporal links uh, just connect the sites with themselves in the in the next temporal point. But this is the, the step one of, of how to do this, and I'm sure that we will develop that in the future. The resulting MEMs of these networks are very interesting. There are some MEMs with clear spatial patterns, like other MEMs are totally temporal, like this. And it is very important, it, uh, here is very important to remark that when I say temporal patterns here, I am talking about all the local populations of each species going synchronized on time. And when, when this happens, uh, these variables are significant. Therefore, in these cases, all the metacommunity variation is in the temporal axis. It's here, it's in the temporal axis. Uh, uh, close to the temporal extreme. Uh, we could say the same for the pure spatial variables, uh, which they will indicate that all the metacommunity variation is spatial. If local communities show, if local communities show independent local dynamics, like, like here, uh, this is a spatial temporal variation. It's not temporal. Uh, it's not uh, purely temporal. Uh, it's a mix of both, uh, spatial and, and temporal. We will be in the middle of, of the two extremes, extremes, in the middle of the two extremes. As I said before, uh, we can test if each mem, uh, if each mem is temporal, spatial, or a mix by means of ANOVA. The other thing, if it's significant or is not significant, is ANOVA. Uh, the R scripts, the, these R scripts to train and use these MEMs are available on, link, on GitHub. Uh, just clicking uh, in this link. So we have uh, all these all these fractions, but when it's when it's fraction a society with ecological processes is relatively more important than than the others. This is the second question. According to a phrase in the meta community ecology book, uh, that depends on on a scale on our observational scale. Previous studies have shown the spatial dependency of our perception of the ecological uh, processes. As I said before, at relatively moderate dispersal rates, environmental variables may fit very well with the metacommunity variation, decreasing with higher and lower dispersal, higher and lower dispersal rates. This depends on the spatial scale observed since we need some spatial extent to obtain enough environmental variation where the species could be sorted. And obviously, on the other hand, dispersal rates increase with the spatial distances among sites. The, the temporal scale observed is also important. Here, I represent the temporal dynamics of two species in one site. In this case, the two species have similar uh, niche uh, they are at optimal conditions with the color green, uh, representing a, a variable of, of an environmental variable. Uh, when uh, this line is orange, the population is in optimal conditions, and blue means uh, suboptimal conditions. Here it's always in, in optimal conditions because it's always green the environment. If the study duration is very short, we don't get any temporal variation, if we increase the study duration, stochasticity could create temporal fluctuation, and then temporal variation increases in the, rate, in the data. It's also important the temporal observational scale taking into account the environmental, uh, the environmental temporal changes. If we increase and out, and out the study duration, we would see a change of the environmental variables and a consequent change in the species composition. These ideas were more developed in these two references. But what happened with the spatial temporal data, uh, this type of data that we want to, to analyze? Uh, we simulated the dynamics of different meta-communities according to two gradients. And in some meta-communities, we remove 
uh, the, the, environmental, the environmental filtering as in natural theory models and in others, environmental filtering was relevant and then patches were suitable or not for the species. Also, we manipulated the dispersal rates from low to high dispersal rates. The community simulations were very similar to many, many previous studies, and you can obtain more information in the paper, or and uh, you have the R scripts available for make the, the, the simulation. Uh, with this data, with this, the rate of the simulations, we sample the metacommunity records temporally with different temporal extents or study durations. We always take the same number of points and consequently the lag, the lag, the temporal lag among temporal samples increases with the time extent. Uh, these are the results of the simulations in the panels on the top we display how the proportion of variation explained by each explanatory set changes or not as we increase the temporal extent observed. The temporal extent observed. On the bottom, we have the dynamics of one species randomly selected from all the species in the simulations. And uh, here, without niche effects, in the, in the level without niche effects, obviously environmental variables were not relevant. And with low dispersal, spatial variation, uh, the, 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 the part displayed by the spatial variation was high. We can see here the, the dynamics of this species that is uh, different in different sites. And uh, we can see uh, 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 some, uh, some of, of these individuals, uh, well, there's no individuals in some places that we are expected to, to find in this line that is zero and the, the conditions are suitable. Uh, this is due to dispersal limitation and therefore pure spatial variables were relevant uh, all the time and this spatial variation was, was one tenth the time and to a spatial fraction always the same. There's no effect of the time extent. In, uh, in this case, all the metagonity variation is spatial. It's in the spatial extreme. As we increase the special rates, we're homogenizing the, 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 the local communities and removing the spatial variation. That favors the, temp the poor temporal variables here in blue. Uh, uh, but we need uh, some temporal extent to observe uh, some variation, like this in the high dispersal, as I said before. Uh, Therefore, the distribution of the metacommunity variation between only spatial or temporal variation depends on the dispersal rate in neutral communities. Uh, with niche effects, we can observe how the environment dominates in metacommunities with intermediate dispersal rates, as I explained before. With dispersal limitation, uh, spatial variables were more relevant as without niche effects, like here. And we can see the absence of these species in suitable sites. This line, this orange line, orange line. Time was only relevant with high dispersal when all the local population were more synchronized. We can see here the rescue of the species in unsuitable conditions in the blue color. And we, uh, here is important the distribution of the environmental uh, variables. In this simulation, we try to get a balanced a balance, uh, spatial temporal variation of the environment, but we will obtain other patterns uh, in the, if the environmental variable was more spatially or temporally distributed. Uh, with the shared fractions between environment and space of finding more relevant. Uh, we also did this analysis with empirical data from three different metacommunities, some for temporary, within one year and a half for river, and one, only one year for the ponds. Then we subset the data uh, to obtain different temporal extent. Uh, we analyzed different groups of aquatic invertebrates separately, uh, chose uh, just following the, the, the the ring, the richness to, to do the, this analysis. And generally, general pure environmental fraction were more relevant here in red. 
uh, than the others. Uh, in this data, the spatial temporal position of the samples were more complex than in the simulations. And we can observe some relevance of combined spatial temporal effects here in, in yellow, that is the light yellow. Uh, the, the effects of the study duration were unclear, and maybe we need to change the sampling design to see these effects uh, there. In finished this talk, and I just want to highlight the importance of this spatial temporal approach because meta communities are not uh, snapshots, they are dynamic, uh, they are like movies, and there are many possibilities for future research with this spatial temporal view. As a take home message, uh, I think it's very important to know how uh, the biodiversity variation is distributed in space and, and time to do an adequate sampling depending on our objective. Because sometimes we can get irrelevant uh, samples, or sometimes we are losing important information. These studies could help us to understand this observational uh, scale dependency. And uh, the last thing, uh, thank you very much to the other two co-authors of this of this uh, work, uh, Paco and Juan, and thanks uh, to uh, the funding or organizers too. And thank you very much for joining uh, to this session. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. And thanks, uh, everybody, for attending this session. Now we have some time for, for questions. If you are interested, you can uh, uh, raise your hand. Just clicking on the small button uh, the, uh, below your uh, screen with this uh, sign showing a person with a, with a hand up and we will leave you uh, some time to, um, to ask or to make some comments everybody is welcome and uh, now i would like to uh, ask miguel matias who is uh, waiting to, to talk yes. Thank you. hi can can you hear me francis Okay, so first thing I would like to say is to, on behalf of the International Biogeography Society, I would like to, to thank you all for being here and in particular to, to Paco and Javi for organizing uh, this event and also obviously to, to the speakers for, for giving their talks. Uh, uh, the group of Valencia, so Paco in particular was one of the first people that we contacted uh, regarding Humboldt Day was one of the first ones to, to accept to, to be part of this, so we are really thankful. We didn't have much to show a couple of months ago when we first talked about this. Um, and to start the conversation, I would, I, would answer you, uh, I would ask you a question. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is, is that there are obviously different gamut diversity between, between Costa Rica and the Mediterranean, as probably would be expected. Uh, but then when we account for abundances, uh, that signal seems to disappear a little bit, if, if I'm not wrong, if I didn't read, read it wrong. So my question is a little bit about, about the species pool in itself. So we are talking, I think we only saw a little bit about active and passive dispersal, but it would be interesting to, to find out a little bit more about the distribution of other traits, uh, potentially those related with maybe biotic interactions, not just about movement. I know that the Medi-Community theory is very, very uh, into the, the movement part of it and dispersal, but it would be interesting to think a little bit more about the, the, the biotic interactions as well. So my question is, is this difference in diversity just adding a lot more rare species in Costa Rica that are not really changing the, the overall community structure? Or the, these added species that we don't have in the Mediterranean in terms of numbers of species, is it also adding more functional diversity in the sense that in Costa Rica we have greater diversity of traits in terms of how uh, the different species explore resources, the, how they interact, uh, how they're, they're basically the trophic traits and, and things like that. Well, okay, thank, thank you very much, Miguel. Uh, well, I would like first also to thank you and all the organizers of, of this. Uh, event of the humble day which is very exciting to all of us interested in biogeography so my applause to all of you who have been 
organizing this uh, world event. So thank you very much to you, Sandra, and everybody, Gates, everybody participating. Now, regarding your, your question, of course, this is a difficult topic, and uh, we are still uh, starting to analyze our data. But of course, uh, we believe that there is a lot of um, lacking information relating uh, uh, interactions and uh, the different functionalities of all the different groups of organisms. Well, it could be also that there is uh, some kind of uh, redundancy in, uh, in the tropics compared to the Mediterranean, so you have more species even with, uh, with similar uh, functions. But when, when from time to time, they, they, uh, they, they have some uh, options or chance to, to become uh, dominant species. It seems that this is uh, uh, happening more often in the tropical than in the Mediterranean. As you said, this, uh, uh, this change in diversity relating to uh, number of species compared to the species composition, apparently there are some effects of this type in which we find some species dominating strong, more, more strongly in, in, the, in, the, in the tropics compared to the Mediterranean. It could be just that we have uh, more, because we have more species, there is some uh, higher probability that some of these species become uh, dominant under some certain circumstances. But of course, uh, there is this important biotic part. We can imagine that uh, if there are some uh, predators and competitors that appears there that could make strong changes in the community at, if, uh, at, at, each, at each site. And we are not uh, showing this, but we are on the process of analyzing the data in terms of how important are the different levels of this uh, uh, meta community that we're analyzing. We, we analyze it separately for each different group, but we could take into account that the zooplankton is affecting the phytoplankton, the phytoplankton is affecting the uh, bridge, or, or, so there might be uh, some relationships that we would like to, to analyze to see if we can find how important are these uh, biotic interactions, if, even if we don't know, of course, many of the species that are present because we don't have basic biological information for many of, for many of them. But uh, we know more or less how they uh, how they behave and how uh, what are basic needs and so on. So we are looking forward to analyze um, more in, in, in depth uh, this uh, biotic interactions. Of course, it, I, I think it could be they could be very important not only the, the environmental effects related to abiotic factors or the temperature or the presence of uh, some plants, but also how the trophic web is affecting the, the diversity and the, the, the dynamics of the metal community itself through time, and of course about the uh, uh, some space with this colonization of different species in different places. So I don't know if I'm answering uh, your question, but I uh, feel that, that you mentioned it is an uh, important topic uh, which uh, we want to address here for so we don't have time for that now. Thank you. I wonder if there is any other questions now? <laughs> We have some more time for more questions. If not, I just uh, would like to say thank you very much. And you can contact us. Uh, you can ask uh, if you want, or you can find us on Google Scholar or in the University of Valencia. Our emails uh, are available, and you can ask uh, in particular to any of us about the environmental aspects, the diversity, the meta communities, the models that, and the experiments of the hatching. So we are, all of this still, or most of it is still unpublished, but uh, we would be happy to discuss with any of you uh, your opinions or your, your, your ideas. So thank you very much for coming. Any other questions maybe now for any of the speakers? If not, uh, thank you all very much, and we can close this session. Thanks. Thanks for coming, and uh, see you in the next uh, talks. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs>